township page, then you can connect your holes from the center port. Connect your holes from the center port to the cylinder. Now, always remember, always remember when you are connecting your hoses that the straight side goes on the gauges or on the center port. Yeah, and then the wonky side, yeah, the crooked side goes on the cylinder. And this recovery, you have to use a recovery cylinder. In the UK, we have gray and yellow top, yeah, but this one is gray and green, which are the new cylinders that are coming up for recovery. Yeah, and that is because of renewables. You know, the color <coughs> green indicates that you know, you're conserving energy or renewable <coughs> sort of substance. Okay, right. Now, if you are recovering for maintenance, say the refrigerant was contaminated, you want to take it out yeah, and do maintenance and charge again, you don't need to purge because already it's contaminated. You want to take it out and do maintenance. But if you are recovering for some kind of servicing and put the same gas back in, then you have to purge to make sure you don't contaminate the gas that you intend to reuse. Yeah? Right. Now, because we are doing recovery, you have to have your recovery unit. Yeah, recovery unit is there. And with the recovery unit, from the center port, you connect it to the recovery unit inlet. Yeah, it goes to the inlet. And then from the inlet, you, you connect from the outlet to the cylinder. From the outlet of the recovery unit to the cylinder. And the cylinder, if you have the one with two valves, yeah, the red and the blue. The blue is vapor, red is liquid. So you connect your hose to the blue. Because the blue has a short tube. Yeah, a short tube, and the red has a deep tube going down to the bottom. Yeah. So you don't want to fill the refrigerant, you know, so that it will touch the deep tube quickly. That will oppose the refrigerant going in. So you use the blue, which has a short tube. So that by the time the refrigerant gets to the tube, you would have filled, you would have put in a lot of refrigerant. Right, so now it's all connected. We have to purge the hoses as well, the hose that is connected to the recovery unit and then from the recovery unit to the cylinder. Yeah, so in order to do that, you remember we cracked the low side, yeah, cracked from there, there you have some pressure, open, open, let it go, all the way, you can purge here, yeah, and then you follow the hose on, you purge at the inlet, yeah, purge at the inlet, and then after that, you open, yeah, and then you open the outlet as well of the pump, and then you purge at the cylinder, yeah, purge at the cylinder, so it's all purged. After purging, now ensure that you mix it, both high and low side, service valves, mix it them, after mix it in, open your gauges, yeah, the two gauges, open them. Open the cylinder. Yeah. Open the recovery unit. Inlet, outlet, and turn it on. And then once you turn it on, you know, you'll be checking and making sure when it goes down to minus 0 0.3, then presumably you've got almost everything out. Now, there is something that is very important. Before you recover refrigerant, you have to make sure you weigh the cylinder. Weigh your cylinder, <coughs> check the gross weight, check the tear weight, yeah? Put it on a scale, check the tear weight, check the gross weight, and then you can check the net weight. So what you do is you, you deduct the tear weight from the gross weight, and that gives you the net weight. So that will indicate whether there is something in the cylinder or not, whether there's gas in the cylinder or not. If there's nothing in the cylinder, then you know where you stand. Now, it's important to also check what we call the um, maximum fill of the cylinder. You know the maximum fill, and then now you have to work out the allowable fill.
the allowable fuel, you do 80% of the maximum fuel. 80% of the maximum fuel. We leave 20% room in the cylinder for expansion. 